Not a problem. <sighs> I'll be needing rest soon. Not a problem. Yes, I am off. <laughs> Ready. We more is coming. I'm here. Done and done. I'm 
Not a problem. Is that all? Is that all? Just ah, come here they you. are! Ready. Not a problem. My feet ache. Can we rest now? Whatever we have to do, it'll keep till morning. Let's rest. soon. I'm here. Give the word. Man, potentis, power. Ready. My feet ache. Can we rest now? Not Whatever we have to do, it'll keep till morning. Let's rest. Right Greetings, child of Ilmata. How are you today? Oh, I'm sorry, but war and charades are the only two games I know how to play. If they are not to your liking, I'm afraid you'll be ill-equipped to play the game that's about to begin. After centuries of exonomized, laboriously worded speeches and delusions of grandeur, it is a welcome change to hear such succinct threats from an enemy. Thank you for disposing of her, by the way. Her speeches were quite tiresome, and she suffered her defeats so poorly. The only thing really standing in the way of my conquering this territory was Exonomai. When you killed her, you removed the largest obstacle in my campaign. As you probably already know, my arrival in this world was a result of conflict with my ancient adversary. I was exiled from my home plane when my vendetta with Exonomai got, as my superiors said, out of control. As soon as I arrived in this world, I knew that Exonomai would follow. After all, what's a few thousand years and a billion miles between old friends? I sought out a base of operations from which I could start a military force. 
In the process of doing so, I heard something calling to me from a distant glacier. It was this. Grenshiniban. It's an artifact so old that it makes me seem young. A crystal shard with magical powers of such magnitude that Kaldahar's heartstone gem looks like a child's toy. Just having it in my possession caused the monstrous creatures of this land to leave their ancient homes and seek me out. Its other powers are too numerous to mention. Despite the fact that the shard has a somewhat overbearing personality, our plans seem to coincide. As for my lieutenants, they were easy enough to find. All of them were eager to join my cause, except for poor naive Brother Padil. The guise of an Ilmatarian revered brother was perfect for traveling and gathering information in Icewind Dale. The form was easy enough to assume. The information inside of Padium's head allowed me to flesh out the role. Everything was going well until that annoying Arendelle and your good friend, the late Rothgar, decided to investigate Exonomai's poorly veiled activities in Dragon's Eye. If that idiot had been a little more clandestine in her business, no one would have suspected. To stall Exonomai and seal off Icewind Dale, I used Granshinaban to freeze the passes, but not quickly enough to prevent Rothgar's band from starting their expedition. I had Craig Frostbeard and his giants cause the avalanche that crushed Rothgar, Akalia, and those other fools. After that, I didn't really care what you were doing until you seized the Heartstone Gem from Exonomai. I thought that Arendelle would be the only person capable of using it. When I killed him, I thought the threat was ended. I certainly didn't expect you to take the gem to Laryl in the severed hand. Very clever. Unfortunately, your actions since that event have been... inconsequential. During your extended bloody trek through Upper Dawns, Worm's Tooth and Lower Dawns, I was building up forces elsewhere, outside of East Haven to be specific. So you see, the destruction of my forces here simply prevents me from having reserve troops during my conquest of the Dale. It's a good thing you can't see East Haven now. It would probably break you to see how easy it is to crush houses and cause temples to explode. Everything you've done is pointless. I am the beginning and the end of this story. I, and only I, will determine how it plays out. Goodbye. Hmm. Ah. Not you. I'm here. I mean, it's fresh. I'll wash this. What do you want? I. In the heat of the battle, the twisted priest of Ilmater stumbled, gripping his chest as if mortally stricken. A faint glow began to emanate from the crystal that hung round his neck. Suddenly, 
the entire cave was engulfed in an explosion of blinding light. When the light finally died, the party discovered that they were no longer within the dark passages of Dorne's Deep. As they struggled to regain their bearings, they realized that they had been returned to the town of East Haven. But this was not the sleepy fishing village they had left so long ago. Enchantment had fallen over the town, encasing what remained of the shattered homes and buildings in a prison of solid ice. At the center of the destruction, upon the very spot where the Temple of Tempest once stood, rose a massive tower of crystal. 